Hi everyone, Sandman here. Before I start today's video, yet another update about my health. I went to the emergency room yesterday for something that was growing inside my throat, and that was actually starting to make me sound like Gollum. And I spent 8 hours there getting pumped with drugs and eventually had to get a minor procedure to remove a small abscess from my throat. And luckily it wasn't very big, or I would have actually had to spend the night at the hospital for observations. I can speak much better now, and I'm basically recovering. And the moral of the story is, if you're the female doctor at the walk-in clinic who can't see this the day before, and basically tell me to go to emergency, then I'm basically not going to a doctor like you ever again. And I went to a hospital where I was treated by all-male staff. The guy taking my blood was doing it so carefully that it wasn't actually causing me any pain. It was absolutely incredible. And the doctor making the diagnosis was fast and got me in a 4-hour IV drip with strong penicillin, and the guy drilling a hole in the back of my throat in the emergency room itself did his nasty job with as little pain as possible inflicted on myself. Now that I've shared this information with everyone, I've probably taken away your appetite. So the worst thing I could possibly do right now is to promote a link to my new Cool Buildings adaptive reuse building called the Silo Restaurant. A restaurant made out of a giant coal silo. It's the first link in the description, and any new subscribers from my channel are appreciated, and I'm still trying to promote it here until it starts to grow with no further promotion. Check out the video of yet another building going its own way. Anyways, today's video is brought to you by a donation from Josh, and here's what he has to say. Greetings Sandman, I've been active in the skeptic community for several years. For a time I'd actually felt like I was making progress because the experience illustrated the dangers of self-deception. Most of the general population never fully comprehends how psychologically corrosive these human inclinations actually are. Please discuss how feminists use social justice warriors to infiltrate communities and how their activities are being analogous to a religious cult. I'm also attaching a few links you might actually want to watch about a guy called Aaron Ra. Well Josh, thanks for your donation, and just so you know I actually put those links in the description below, and thanks for pointing out Aaron Ra, because I never actually heard of this guy before. I also think that you said that the words of this Aaron Raw character are, if you're not a feminist, you're a sexist. Which is kind of like saying, if you don't believe in Jesus, Allah, or God, then you're going to hell. Feminism takes on such absolutes and extremes. And Aaron Raw is just feeding the feminist cult, and he's probably just interested in making money off the entire fiasco. Add to that, Aaron's wife and close friends are all feminists. So that's probably why he's saying ridiculous absolute statements like, if you're not a feminist, you're a sexist. Josh, I also agree with you that feminists appear to be using Aaron Ra to influence the skeptic community and sneak feminist ideas into the door when no one is looking. But the greatest community that feminism has infiltrated has basically been academia, trying to mold and shape young impressionable minds to do what you want. Yes, feminism is like a cult, but at the same time it's more like a virus or possibly even a multi-generational infiltration and subversion campaign. Late last week I was in the United States filming that silo video and I noticed a difference in the masculinity in men and femininity in women in the United States. And then the moment I went back to Ontario I could see and feel the influence of feminism here in Canada. Here in Canada I wouldn't be allowed to be as masculine as a man as what I saw was going on in western New York State. I noticed that men and women were a lot less at war in that country. And yes, feminism was still there below the surface but it didn't seem to affect people's behavior like it does here in Toronto. But anyways, now let me talk about the idea that feminism is a religious cult. Cults deal with absolutes and unchangeable ideas. And no matter what issue is brought up around feminists, rape culture always has to get mentioned. I think the idea behind this is that no matter what argument a feminist opponent makes, the argument always gets taken back to that same point. And men also have the tendency to use empirical scientific evidence to argue against women. But men don't seem to understand that bringing up rational arguments with an irrational female doesn't seem to work. And if I were to have the free energy and unlimited patience to debate with a feminist, then I would understand that she would basically be bringing rape culture in at some point, no matter what I said. To women, their blind faith in rape culture is like when Christians often say, if you don't believe in Christ, you're going to hell. It's designed to make you feel bad about your argument and basically get you to feel irrational and make you frustrated. It's all about dumping shame and guilt onto you when you're trying to think. That's why if you speak to a feminist, a good way of doing it is basically to talk about rape culture right off the bat, and say that you don't agree with the rape culture in prisons directed towards men, and that you don't agree with rape culture where school teachers are basically taking advantage of boys. And when you do this, get irrational as possible and then do it in a kind of bitchy way. Don't get loud and extremely angry about the situation. And sometimes you want to be a little bit assertive because women get passive and submissive when there's an assertive male entity in the room. 
you can shut down their irrational behavior by exerting some extreme masculinity. Often when my brother talks to his wife, he gets red and angry and looks like he's about to explode. And she becomes very passive and even smiles like she's happy. The feminist cult is filled with angry women, and they have yet to meet a man out there that's even angrier than they are. For many of them, anger signals the mating instinct. And it's almost as if when men aren't angry at them, then there's no reason for anyone to couple with them. I don't know if this has anything to do with feminist cult brainwashing, or if it's just really bad childhood memories. The cult of feminism, I believe, is filled with sexually frustrated women with really bad tempers that would probably be under control if they met the perfect man to be assertive over them. But ironically, women have structured society so that's socially unacceptable for men to be assertive towards them. Feminism created this problem, and now it's trying to solve the problem of passive men by trying to agitate us so we become aggressive and assertive once again. They created this problem, and now they're doubling down on misandry. Other communities that feminists have obviously tried to infiltrate are the gaming community. And that's really what Gamergate was all about, fighting against feminists trying to infiltrate the gaming establishment. And I'm sure that everyone listening to this has heard of Anita Sarkeesian. Gaming is a male-oriented industry and probably one of the last male safe havens. And I remember in the 90s when I was a Christian, I would often turn on the television and I would see many female pastors infiltrating Christianity, and they obviously had a very gynocentric agenda. It was almost as if they were getting angry and challenging the people that were watching them on the screen. It was completely bizarre. The argument back then was that women could not be pastors just like men, and that they couldn't do the job right. And that's also around the time when I started seeing stupid preachers telling their flocks that if you believe in Jesus, he will basically give you financial prosperity for the rest of your life. And this is about the same time that these female pastors were coming in. Women are the great consumers in our society, so the way that I see it, they subverted the churches to allow the idea of consumerism to spread through the churches so women no longer had to feel guilty about praying to God to become millionaires. Ironically, it was Jesus that supposedly said that it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than it is for a wealthy man to enter into heaven. Maybe he was only referring to men and not women. Maybe women are allowed to be as wealthy and bad as they want and still get a free uterus pass into heaven. But what women don't understand is that by traditional ideas of wealth, we are living like kings from hundreds and thousands of years ago. Out of all the feminist infiltration, I still think that education is the worst one. Because future generations form the character of future societies. People are the most valuable resource that we have, and when we have feminists coming into schools and saying that there aren't any real biological differences between men and women, we have a problem. I suffered through four years of social justice warriors trying to silence me and other men in my school. And if you've been paying attention to the scientific community last year, then you would have heard the shirtgate fiasco with Matt Taylor. Feminists broke him down into tears after he successfully landed on a comet, but feminists only focused on his misogynistic shirt. What's next? Are ties going to be considered sexist as well, because they portray how big a man wants to be down there? Ironically, in the late 19th and early 20th century, men were more scientifically educated. They went to church and they had moral values. And look what happened. Women infiltrated the churches, ran them into the ground, and this basically led to their eventual closing. And no one is going there anymore. And I remember when I used to go to church, I would get these old ladies in the front judging me with their eyes. And it was really annoying. Josh, you need to understand that it's not just feminism that's responsible for this. It's gynocentrism in general. Once you allow a woman to walk all over you or your organization, you basically set that pattern down as acceptable. Recently, Rouge V was up here in Canada, and I'll eventually get a video about him out, but he didn't back down when they tried to attack him. That's one of the things that I respect about him. Feminists and women in general only seem to see themselves as victims. And I know that the men's rights movement tried the whole victim mentality card, And feminists are like aggressive Jehovah's Witnesses that go door-to-door and push religion onto people. The only major difference for feminism is that its church is actually universities, schools, and other public institutions. Feminism is worse than a cult. Cults build their own buildings and schools of knowledge. However, feminists just go into something that already exists and attempt to subvert it and just end up destroying it instead. I guess you can say that cults get into the minds of vulnerable people and destroy their minds. And feminists go one step further besides destroying your mind. They also destroy the institutions that they see as a threat to them. They are like a swarm of locusts going from building to building and organization to organization, pushing out the men and installing their puppets to control key positions. And ironically, this all appears to be done without any planned coordination. Women seem to organize and take power naturally, and that's the scariest thing. You're also allowed to criticize cults, and they often defend themselves. But if you criticize feminism, you can lose your career, money, and possibly get thrown into jail, or the man gulags, if you don't agree with them. 
If you disagree with a cult like Scientology, the worst they can do is get lawyers to come after you. But they can't threaten to have you fired and lose your social status. The so-called cult of feminism uses public shaming and online harassment to control men. They've also successfully subverted the media, as well as the mayors of cities like Toronto and Montreal, where Rouge spoke recently. The mayors had to kowtow to what the feminists wanted, otherwise lose votes in elections. In feminism, all journalists and politicians are automatically social justice warriors. That's the brilliance of feminism. If you don't stand with it, you stand against it, and you're shamed for that. Anyways, before I finish this video, I want to talk about how I recently did two Sandman Unscripted videos, and the first one was received well because I'm guessing the people wanted to hear my voice and what it sounded like without me actually going into character. But by the time I released the second video, the novelty had already worn off, and the viewership was cut by more than half. I guess that MGTOW Nation has spoken with their views and eyeballs, and they're saying that they don't like the idea of me producing unscripted videos, because it doesn't keep their interest long enough for them to basically stick around. Many of the comments said things like, and that they prefer the shorter format for time. Another person said they liked the new format, but ironically, as I said, the views went the other way. So if I do any talks in the future, I won't mess with the Daily Dose of Red Pills format and simply post any new Sandman unscripted videos on Sandman 2 channel and let everyone know it's there. But I still did manage to get a lot of positive feedback for the Sandman unscripted videos, but I still have to grow this channel as well as the go-your-own-way phenomenon. Anyways, thanks again, Josh, for your donation. And I never really thought about how far feminists have gone with regards to using social justice warriors and basically reshaping higher education, religion, and now gaming culture, as well as the skeptic community. If we look at the decline and eventual death of education and religion as an indication, they subvert, and then the men leave, and those institutions get hollowed out. That appears to be the historical pattern, and I'm sure that it'll continue. Anyways, thanks for the donation. And as for everyone else, please follow me on Twitter, or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the divorce lawyers away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.